Linear programming uh, using class, pad, and graph and table. So our first job is to set up the restrictions that we're given here. So let's start with the first one. And uh, y is equal to 3 minus x divide 4. And tap execute. Uh, the next one is y is equal to 6 minus x. 6 minus x. Tap execute. The next one, y is equal to 1. So I just pop one in there. And the last one is the x equals type. So I'll change the type either using type x equals type or from the drop down menu here, where you can also see we can get all the other inequalities. So while we're at it, let's use x is greater than or equal to two. We actually want this option here. And now when I put in a two here, you can see that this one is set up or ready to go. Now to change these ones, to the required, the first one has to be a less than or equal to. I can tap on the equal sign and choose the y is less than or equal to type and confirm it and do the same for the other two. So this one is again the same, less than or equal to type. And the last one is got to be greater than or equal to. So on the green one, y is greater than or equal to type. So you can see whole way variety of ways either choosing the type or from this drop down box here set them up first before you enter the expression okay we'll tap execute to get back out of that now before we graph our inequalities downstairs we need to check that we're going to just get the intersection rather than the union so if we tap on to graph format here uh, you'll notice that the inequality pop by default, if we tap default, is the union. Now we actually just want the intersection of these regions rather than all of the regions. So first we're going to change that, tap set, and then we'll draw our inequalities. First one, second one, third one, and you can see it slowly reduces our feasible region down to this area here. So let's zoom in on that one. Um, I'll do a box zoom here and redraw it. So here's our feasible region. Our next job is to find the vertices of the feasible region. So to do this with multiple lines selected, it's always a bit of a nuisance, but here we go. We'll choose analysis, G solve and intersection. And class pad um, indicates which line is the currently selected one. So um, if we want to find the point of intersection of this line with the red one, say we select the current line by tapping on execute and now you can see the next one is um, flashing so let's go with the red one and execute again and that point is at 4 2 so we make a note of that and now if we wanted to move on and find the intersection say of the red with the green we can do that again analysis G solve intersection and I'm going to tap the up cursor uh, which is selected this line so we'll lock it in with execute and um, not that one. So if I tap the up again, it puts it back onto the one we've got up again. And now it's this one's flashing, which is going to give us this point of intersection. We tap execute. Now, obviously, in this simple example, you could have read that off the graph. But uh, if the numbers weren't so nice, that's the method. Now, the last one is intersections with um, a vertical line like x equal to. No amount of looking for the line uh, will work because ClassPad doesn't want to find the intersection of an X equals type with a Y equals type. So we've got to resort to a few other tricks and basically we want to get the cursor onto either the, uh, the blue line for this function or the green line and then we're going to tell it that the X coordinate is 2. So here we go, we'll start tracing. ClassPad has come in onto this line. Now we know this is where X is 2, so we're going to tap the 2 button, say OK, and there's that point of intersection at 2, 2.5. Now this one is obviously at 2, 1, just from the nature of these functions, but if we'd wanted to find it, we'd do exactly the same, start into trace mode. We'd go up or down. Um, here we go. I've now put the cursor under the green line. We select it with execute. And then I can just type in where I want to go, which is to 2, and say OK. And it jumps over to the coordinates here at 2, um, where X is 2, Y is 1. And um, now, the last thing is to actually 
evaluate the optimum value I'm going to nip into main here and here's one way of doing it with matrix methods so math2 will create a uh, little column matrix like this we'll put in each pair of points so uh, 2 here and 2.5 I think was one of our vertices the next one was at 4 comma 2 4 comma 2 and the last one if we forget about the one we just found at 2 1 so this was at 5, 1. And now we want to multiply these by the first row by 5 because the, we're trying to maximize this function 5x plus 15y. So 5 is going to get multiplied by all of these numbers and adding to that 15 of these. So into the second box, 15. When we tap execute, um, because I'm in standard mode, let's do it again in decimal, tap execute. Here we go, we can see that the maximum value comes from the middle point, which is when x is 4 and y is 2. And so there's our, um, the optimum point and the optimum value is 50.